Joining me now, Maya Vujinovic, CEO of Digital Assets at FG Nexus. Maya, thanks so much for joining me at the desk. It's great to see you again, Caroline. Thank you for having me. So we're talking future of work, AI disruption. We hear a lot of talk about AI being a productivity booster and a job killer. What do you think? What narrative will win out? Uh, with the, I think of the past year, the narrative of a job killer has definitely won. Uh, I would say we're slowly starting to see that it's a job booster. It will make, it will augment certain types of jobs, right? Certain types of jobs may go away, but in about 10 to 20 years, right? In the next kind of short term span, year, two, five years, I see it more as augmenting our lives and helping and being a productive asset than anything else. Dig into that a bit more. How do you see AI changing the way we work over the next five to 10 years? Yeah, so right now you have AI in healthcare that is really impacting healthcare in diagnostics and MRIs and you know research. You have AI right now really impacting our transportation, that's kind of obvious. You have in finance, uh, in algorithm trading and etc. You have an HR, in legal, um, that is quite here. Now is it here at scale in those last two that I mentioned? No, but I think in the next two years you're going to start to see assistance of assistance. You're going to start to see legal research on AI. You're going to start to see definitely HR and companies trying to push more of AI tools onto their employees to learn and be more productive and kind of make them superhuman um, in, in a sense. Can you give an example of AI at work right now that maybe we wouldn't even notice? I mean, Copilot, Microsoft Copilot is something that is chat GPT. I think most people take that for granted, but think about it. Everybody I speak to will say, I don't really use Google anymore. I just go to chat GPT and I, you know, do everything I need to do in legal. I obviously all of those things have to be double checked, but there are people that are using chat GPT today for $200 a month to do medical diagnosis, to double check medical diagnosis that they've been given from their doctor. I mean, that is, a, that, that is an incredible advancement of what we have. And it, it is pretty cool. Uh, and it brings us kind of forward. It makes us more efficient in many ways. When it comes to automation though, how do you balance AI with also having a human touch? Because as someone who leverages ChatGPT often, it's wrong a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you almost have to tell it that it's stupid and don't be stupid in order to give you good answers. Look, jobs like yours, for example, or jobs like in, in therapists, in school teachers, um, the, those will not be replaced anytime soon. I don't envision a robot in your place, you know, interview me anytime soon. Um, so, so I think uh, things will evolve, um, but they, they are not going to just suddenly change in the next year or two. I think a lot of people out there are making a lot of money by saying we're all done, right? But reality is there are certain emotional things that we still don't have with AI and we won't have. now. Um, I think Dennis from DeepMind, Google DeepMind, has predicted that, and they've been quite consistent actually with this, and in, in the next 10 years, they'll probably have AGI. Now, there is, a, there is a thing where you can say, how do you define AGI, right? Uh, but I, I do kind of turn to them quite often and turn to him to kind of tell me when does it become really serious when AI starts to develop these emotions that humans have. Still, my prediction is we won't be seeing any of that at scale for another 20 years. You make up a good point, though, because mm -hmm. uh, when we first chatted months ago, you told me I was being too nice to <laughs> AI. And you said you need to almost tell it it's stupid. And I told you I was saying please. And you said, yeah, don't say please. <laughs> it will work harder for you if you're mean to it. Explain that to me. Yeah, yeah good memory. Um, so I noticed when just ChatGPT came out that I was saying, okay, now let's do this and please, could you, right? And I realized that every time I said that, it was kind of repeat itself. And so I think that's a basic fact now. Everybody knows this. I mean, you have to almost tell it, please don't be wrong. You know, you're acting pretty stupid. This is, you're not AG, you're not AI quality. You're, I, I've even used prompts like saying you are a low class human, you do not have a good education, you need to act like AI. And, and it, it would actually dig deeper into answers. I, I don't have an explanation of why that happens, but uh, I can only tell you a sci-fi answer, which, uh, which I do think that um, you know, at some point you will start to see 
um, a bad AI and good AI. Uh, and that will depend on how we train AIs. There will be some bad actors in this world. And I do think that AI is almost capable of sensing when something is good and something is bad. And so I, I, I do see a future where we will have AI that will act in a, in a ways that is not going to be good for humans. So I know most people don't want to believe that, but maybe I watch too many sci-fi films, but I, I do think it's not anytime soon. However, though, it would all depend on our training of AI. Well, you say that we're in act one of AI right now. What can we expect in act two, hopefully not these bad actors, and, and what do we need to do to prepare for that? Yeah, so Act One, when I refer to that, I think it's infrastructure, right? Um, it's solid infrastructure, electricity, uh, chips, right? Um, everything that we're seeing now and what we've seen with NVIDIA. I think Act Two is applications. Um, I don't know if, if, if Dennis is correct, if in the next five to 10 years we start to see AGI, then that Act Two may start to see some bad actors. Um, through those applications. Because remember, a lot of the AI is trained on real data, but it's also trained on synthetic data. And synthetic data can be manipulated. I'm not an expert in synthetic data, but from the basic understanding, you know, that act two, you could have a lot of bad actors. And I think there are other issues in regarding AI really picking up steam. And one of those is just do we have the power to support all of these, you know, all of this technology? And do we? Yeah, it's one of the most important questions you ask. And I think every single TV channel should be asking this question about electricity. Uh, I think what we've seen in the last couple of days with the fight with China and minerals and all of that, um, you know, we should be doing the same around electricity. There should be a really a large awakening around how much electricity we need for AI. Just in the next year or two, we are going to need as much as a whole New York City be put on a grid. That's how much electricity we would need just for the U.S. consumption in AI. And so um, globally, that's a lot more as well. And so I think we need to be, and I think this administration, by the way, has done an incredible job of focusing on that, uh, right or wrong in many, many people's eyes, depending on you know which take uh, you, you align with. But I believe that, that we should be pushing on electricity development all the way. And I think they've been correct when it comes to that. Is that even possible though, mm -hmm. putting a whole New York City on a grid in the next one to two years? Um, yes, but it's extremely fragmented. I think it is possible, but our, our U.S. grid is fragmented, our infrastructure is fragmented, and I think if I was anybody in AI space and looking to invest, and I, I think you've also seen in the last, you know, uh, four or five days, there's been a lot of discussion of, are we in AI bubble? Are we over investing in AI? And, and I said it the other day on, on CNBC, depends what you're investing in. If you're investing in infrastructure, then you need to be doubling down on that. If you're investing in applications that actually ha are backed by infrastructure, real utility, real impact, then you need to double down on that. We are in the real race with China. There is there's, that's not anymore a question. And I think when, when people come and say, well, you know, U.S. will win in culture and, you know, U.S. dollar is dominant, I think we live in a bit of an illusion. You know, there is U.S. and there's China, and then there is China with the rest of the world. <laughs> and there is U.S. kind of on its own. And so, so I think we need to start thinking about it that way and really... Um, I, I think there is something that Dennis mentions, um, I think he mentioned it a couple of years ago even, where he said that even that 10 minutes of 15 minutes, who comes out with AGI, that first 10, 15 minutes is really going to kind of lead for years to come. Who's leading and, and right now? I Look, 90% of AI companies in the world that we're using are US based, okay? Now, a lot of those scientists that work in those companies are Chinese. And so, or are Chinese nationals, right? Or are US nationals that are from China? And we don't know if they're gonna go back. And I think this is really, to me, this should be a core question of where we're at. I know it's gotten to that level, but that is the level we've got to discuss these things. And so I think China leads in industrial and China leads in the rest of the world in covering AI. But I believe still, U.S. is in a little bit of a race because 90% of companies that people use around the world are, um, 
our U.S. companies in AI. And that's why I wrote a piece um, about a month ago, two months ago, where I called it an AI dollar, um, basically saying that because these companies originate in the U.S., right, all of those subscription services have to be paid in the U.S., right, they all have to settle in USD, and therefore, you know, that's another way of doing diplomacy and pushing U.S. dollar globally. Okay, so just finally, from an investor perspective, not that you're a chief investment officer yeah. by any means, but how should investors be thinking about this as an opportunity? As you mentioned, there's the questions, is AI a bubble? But should they really be homing in on the electrical play? Should they be focusing on investing in China or here in the US? What should investors be doing right now? Yeah, I mean, depend what your ma depends what your mandate is, right? Some people don't have a mandate to go beyond infrastructure. Some people have, a, have only to focus on applications. Um, I think if I was an investor, I would focus on infrastructure. It's a lot harder and a lot longer play. I would look at applications that have to do anything with legal, with trading, with healthcare, certainly, uh, with HR. Uh, everything that helps the bottom line of a company that is going to increase the bottom line of the company. Uh, look for those applications because that's exactly well, where they will have an impact and, the, and they will do really well. All right, we have to leave it there. Maya, we hope you'll come back and talk to us more soon because you have so many interesting insights. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. <laughs> that's Maya Vujinovic, CEO, Digital Assets at FG Nexus.